Every day, hundreds of people who have fled conflict zones try to cross the Mediterranean. More than 450 refugees have drowned there so far this year. Sandra Hamami is a volunteer rescue worker based on the Greek island of Lesbos. This time of year, the seas are rough, so it's even more dangerous for the refugees to try to cross. Will Sandra and her Sea Watch team be able to help them get to shore safely? It's shortly after six in the morning. Sandra and her crew are already on the job. Most of the refugee boats arrive off Lesbos between 8 and 11. The weather's good today for the second day in a row. We had four or five days of really bad weather, so we couldn't send any boats out. It'll be a lot worse again tomorrow, so we want to see lots of boats today. Sandra has been working here for seven weeks now. Everyone on her team is a volunteer. Their boat was paid for by donations. Sandra speaks fluent Arabic. Her parents are from Egypt. Her language skills are essential on this job. She's actually a political scientist by training, but she comes here to help out whenever she can. People are dying right here on our doorstep. Children are dying. These people are just trying to build a better life for themselves. The EU's restrictive policy on refugees and its business deals with Turkey mean that people who are fleeing conflict zones are forced to take these drastic measures to get here. I come out here because I want to keep them from drowning. Ten minutes later, the team arrives at their destination a stretch of the Aegean where only eight kilometers separate the Turkish coast from the island of Lesbos. They're constantly on the lookout for refugees and they stay in contact with the radio dispatch unit. That unit coordinates the rescue efforts of all the various aid organizations in this area. Sandra's crew has just spotted a refugee boat, and they head towards it. A few minutes later, they're called back. Another rescue boat is closer, and they will pick up the refugees. That's the only boat they've seen so far this morning. It's unusually quiet. The volunteers suspect that the Turkish authorities may be restricting the flow of refugees today because of a major state visit. That's happened before during a big visit. I think it was Obama. There weren't any boats at all. And I mean none. The Turkish government is getting tons of money from other countries to keep the refugees from crossing, so they've got to start doing it. Sandra's team have been out on the water for eight hours now. It's time to head home. Sandra's glad that only a few refugees tried to cross today. But this job can be demanding. She recalls one of her worst days. In fact, it was her second day on the job. The weather was awful, as you can see. Huge waves, high winds. It was freezing cold and it was snowing. The dispatchers called us and said that a Greenpeace boat had gone to pick up some refugees. But the refugees' boat was sinking and there were people in the water. That's the worst thing that can happen.
During the rescue effort, even more people could end up in the water. The volunteers had to move quickly. The refugees' boat was still sinking. That's me there. I just grabbed the first person I saw in the water. It was a little girl, and I pulled her on board. The adults were harder to rescue because they weighed more. They were soaked and exhausted. It was tough getting them on board. Most of the life jackets that the refugees wear are useless fakes. They're filled with straw, and when they're soaked through, they pull people down like an anchor. Two people died that day. One was a four-year-old boy. I watched as his uncle paid his last respects. It's the worst thing that could possibly happen. We don't want to see children die out there. We don't want to see anyone die out there. Two people died, but that could have been prevented. And that's what makes me so sad and angry. I couldn't do anything about it. So I was angry at myself as well. When something like that happens, I talk to my family about it, especially my son, to find out how he's doing. That's how I relax and remind myself of normal life. Later, Sandra and her crew review some new orders from the Greek government and the European border agency Frontex. The authorities want to keep a closer eye on the rescue volunteers. For the past few days, they've had to get special permission to go out. The volunteers say they can't do their job now because of all this red tape. In one case, we'd gone out to a boat that was sinking. We wanted to tow the boat to shore, but we had to wait for Frontex to give us the go-ahead. So we had to sit and wait while the authorities were fiddling around. We lost a lot of time. It was just ridiculous. These new measures have prompted other aid organizations to stop their rescue programs. But Sea-Watch plans to continue. The next morning, the volunteers are back on the water. The weather is pretty good. A little after 8, Sandra spots a rubber boat and calls the dispatchers. Julia, Julia, this is Sea-Watch. Can you repeat over? Sea-Watch, this is Juliet. Go ahead. Juliet, we have a visual on the boat, northeast of Coracas. We go there to check it out. Over. Sea-Watch. How far? Two miles? Yeah, that seems about right. The volunteers pull up to the refugees' boat. It seems to be in pretty good shape, and the motor's still working. Hey, do you speak Arabic? Do you speak Arabic? Follow us. Understand? Just follow us. Before Sea-Watch and other groups started their rescue efforts, some refugee boats often crashed on the rocky shore. 
Sandra and her crew lead the refugees towards a beach where they can land safely. But then the boat's motor conks out. If the volunteers hadn't been there, these people would be in big trouble. The rescue crew decides to tow the refugees to shore. After the refugees come ashore, they're handed over to some other volunteers. This was perfect. We found them on the water, they're all in good shape, and we got them safely to shore. That's the way to do this. Later, Sandra and her team meet for dinner. They discuss the day's work, what they did right, and where they can make improvements. Sandra has just received a thank you email from a teacher in Germany. I spent about two hours today with my newest German language student. He's two years old and arrived in Germany about eight weeks ago. His mother says the people who rescued them spoke German. Whoever it was, they should know that this little guy is running around all over the place and he can count to ten. He wasn't found dead on a beach somewhere. I'd like to express my profound gratitude, and that's putting it mildly. Sandra and her crew don't remember this particular child, but it's emails like this one that keep them going. And they can use some encouragement right now. The weather forecast for tomorrow is pretty bleak. Ich bin hier auf der Schau.